What if I told you that each of us in this room have received a gift valued $10 million? That gift is your life. Statistical value of life by economists is $10 million. You could Google it. But indeed, our life is priceless. So how would you live your priceless life to its fullest? I'm going to share with you how I achieved my dreams and how you too could achieve your dreams. Let me take you to the intensive care unit where I was a medical resident on call. It's 5 a.m. I've been up all night long trying to keep my patient alive. He's been on a ventilator connected to every machine with cardiac and respiratory failure. And he has not made any urine for days because his kidneys had also shut down. I've tried everything I could to turn this patient around, but so far with no luck. Then I caught a glimpse of something new. Drops of urine is trickling from patient's Foley tube into the plastic bag. Wow! This was the first sign that my patient is turning around from dying, overwhelmed with joy and almost in tears that one ounce of urine felt like liquid gold. <laughs> At that moment, I felt the preciousness of life deep in my soul. At that moment, I realized a decade of my medical training and all that hard work was all worthwhile to save his one life. At that moment, I realized that finally I have become a physician. And then I remember when I was a little girl in Korea, Dr. Dare had saved my life. Fast forward 30 some years, here I was paying forward and saving lives. But you might be surprised to hear that being a doctor was not in my original plan. Instead, I grew up in Korea dreaming of becoming an artist. I was fascinated in colors and creating beautiful things. And I dreamed of being an artist someday in Paris. But you know, life has a way of throwing some obstacles on our path. And sometimes, monumental obstacles. So this was me when I was little. This is my family, my mom and two younger brothers with my father taking a photo. And I was a high school student. So everything changed overnight when my family and I moved from Korea to the USA. South Korea back then was still a poor country faced with a constant threat from another invasion from north. I was 16 years old, and my father was already in his 50s, and we spoke no English. My parents were professionals in Korea, a teacher and a pharmaceutical company executive. But in America, they became struggling immigrants, tried to run a small grocery store, getting robbed at gunpoint. I find myself in New York City High School, where I couldn't understand what anyone around me was saying. Without the language, I became invisible, just target of terrible bullying. Imagine being uprooted in the middle of your 10th grade to a foreign country 7,000 miles away, where you don't speak the language and you don't know the culture. And yet, you soon have to get ready for college and figure out your career path. I felt completely lost and just desperate. And then I realized my new surrounding, America, wasn't going to change for me, that I had to learn the new language and I had to adapt. So the first thing I did was to adapt an American name. My Korean name is Su Jung. But Susie is easy for people to say. I didn't want my name to be yet an additional barrier. And since I didn't really have anyone that I could really rely on, I felt I needed to find a career path other than art that offers certainty that I could support myself. So I decided to become a physician. 
although it felt like an impossible dream to a Korean girl who didn't speak English. And I had no idea how I would get there. But all I knew was that I had to make it completely on my own, just me and my God. In hindsight, I see that I had adapted what Carl Jung said, that I am not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become. So I arrived at Wesleyan University, still speaking very little English. And I sat in the front row of every class with a cassette player, and I recorded all the lectures because I couldn't understand the lectures, let alone take notes. And then I majored in chemistry of all things because it required the least English, although I had no interest in the subject. Even in medical school, I still had to carry and use my Korean English dictionary every day. On top of my coursework, I still had to carry multiple jobs because my family couldn't pay for any part of my college or medical school. But eventually came the end of my training. 15 years after I set up my dream, I graduated from Yale Medical School and residency and achieved my seemingly impossible dream. And then I jumped right into medical practice and got busy right away. And I love helping patients, lessening their physical and mental suffering and making a difference every day. And I have so many wonderful, unforgettable stories, some of which are from my medical mission trips abroad. But there was one thing missing from my life. My original passion for art, my original dream, it had been buried for decades and couldn't be suppressed anymore. But where was I going to find the time? I was so busy with medical practice and raising two children. And then something happened. About 10 years ago, when I was driving home after a long, long day, I dozed off, and my car swerved across the midline in the highway. Luckily, I didn't crash. But that moment made me realize that if I had died then, I would have never got to live my original dream as an artist. That pivotal moment gave me the clarity that I needed to revive my lost dream. So I started studying art every chance I had, taking evening classes, doing group shows, and eventually solo shows. Bringing art back into my life felt like an oasis in the middle of a desert. But most of my paintings had to be done past midnight. But eventually, I celebrated my new identity as a physician artist. I've shown my art all around the world, from New York to Paris, from Miami to Madrid to Brussels, as I continue to care for my patients. As a physician, my goal is to lessen my patient's physical suffering. But in medicine, I witness a lot of human suffering. And because of that, my mission as an artist is to bring beauty, joy, and a healing in the world full of darkness. My colors are bright and bold, and I strive to highlight the beautiful side of life with my artwork. The underlying theme of my art is love of life, passion, and a beautiful journey called life. I have series for ocean lovers, music lovers, and wine lovers. As a physician, I am highly analytical and very, very precise. But when I enter my art studio, I let go of all that control and allow myself to become an instrument of creative muse. Letting go of all that control and all the fear, I get to create magical, spontaneous pieces that portray the freedom 
to the viewers. In my medical career, I've had over 80,000 patient encounters so far. And one of the most important things that I learned over and over again is that life is a precious one-time gift. Remember, it's valued at $10 million. But from a medical perspective, you and I are worth far more. I've been with many patients near the end of their life, and many have regrets about the things they didn't get to do. Research shows only 2% of people fulfill their life dream. Check out this cute cartoon of Snoopy following his dream. <laughs> so how will you achieve your dream with one precious life you have? I'm going to share with you four keys. Key number one, get clear on your dream. So how do you get clear on your dream? I want you to imagine that today is the last day of your life. Do you have a dream that you wish you had pursued? Write it down. Harvard Business School research shows that having a written goal makes it 10 times more likely you will achieve it. Key number two, visualize your dream. Visualize your dream in a great detail, as though it is already your reality. Okay, and then practice doing this for five minutes every morning and every night. I used to visualize being a physician in a white coat, treating patients, although I was just a high school student learning to speak English. Key number three, know your enemies. When you get stuck, Check to see if one of these inner enemies is in play. S-E-F-U, self-doubt, excuses, fear, and feeling of unworthiness. First step in overcoming these negative forces is recognizing and labeling them for what they are. Once you label them, then there are some specific tools you can apply. For instance, did you realize that most of our fear is based on some imagined event that hasn't even occurred and likely never will? Courage is not lack of fear, but feeling it and taking action anyway. Key number four, take that first step towards your dream and then show up every day. No matter what gets in the way, show up every day. Each day of your life is a priceless gift. Every day sun rises is a new opportunity, a new chance to try again. One of the paintings that I show in my show in Paris is called Follow Your Dream to the Stars. This painting is about pursuing your seemingly impossible dream and achieving it. I remember I was a scared 16-year-old who faced enormous obstacles in a new country, who went on to become a physician artist. You too could become a trailblazer and achieve your big dream. When you walk out of here, I want you to remember that you have received this amazing one-time gift called life. As Mae West said, you only live once, but if you do it right, that once is enough. Thank you.